హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అండ్ ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్ సెట్ అపాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ మాడ్యూల్ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ టుడే నగాటా స్మిర్నో మెట్రైజేషన్ థియర్ యాజ్ మెన్షన్ డర్లియర్ యురిజోన్స్ మెట్రైజేషన్ థియరమ్ ఇట్ వాజ్ నాట్ గివ్ ఎ కంప్లీట్ ఆన్సర్ టు మెట్రైజబిలిటీ దిస్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ వాజ్ సాల్వ్ బై ఎఫర్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ సెవరల్ పీపల్ there are various versions of metrizability theorem we shall now concentrate on one such result which seems to be most satisfactory namely nagata smirno metrization theorem we shall present a proof due to nagata a proof due to smirno you may look into villard's book before that we need to introduce another version of normality so the nagata's proof of metrization theorem is in spirit similar to urizon's but since second countability is removed now the embedding will be in a much larger product space and also we need a little more uh, uh, strengthening than normality so that is what we want to introduce now a topological space x is said to be perfectly normal if for every pair ab of disjoint closed sets inside x there exists a map h from x to minus 1 plus 1 such that a is the precise inverse image of minus 1 and b is the precise inverse image of 1 okay all right so i have said a b disjoint row subset if one of them is empty it doesn't make sense so both of them should be non empty also so that is uh, that is necessary all right that is assumed when you are talking about normality and so on the precise inverse image is a stronger or stronger thing so even in a normal space you will have a going to minus 1 and b going to 1 that is possible but there is more points may go to minus 1 and more points may go to plus 1 so that that is where the perfect normality comes this precise set of points wherein this a is precise set of points wherein h takes value minus 1 similarly b is precise set of points wherein h takes value plus 1 okay a normal space is perfectly normal if and only if each closed subset is g delta so this is where you know the link between perfectly normal and normal is established g delta is the key remember that under a continuous function inverse image of any singly turn continuous function into a metric space okay into a r for example inverse image of a single turn under a continuous function is a g delta okay so if it is perfectly normal a and b will be g delta sets right so what it says is each closed subset is g delta clearly perfectly normal is normal there is no problem so proving g delta for every a is every closed set g delta is what you have to show that is all we want to say so if only if part is obvious because because once you have this you know a closed subset must be g delta okay if and only if is what i want to show right so to prove the if part suppose a is intersection of uns and b is intersection of vns for all un and vn okay un and vn are all open subsets for all n and a intersection b is empty start with a and b are empty subsets okay and write a as intersection of un because it's g delta b is intersection of g delta both un and vn for all of n they are open subsets by normality we can first show okay okay first of all assume that 
u n intersection v m is empty. Okay. So, you have a is contained inside u n, b is contained inside v m, but they may not be uh, uh, disjoint. Okay. A and B are closed subsets, disjoint closed subsets. Therefore, inside these open subsets, you can choose smaller open subsets such that your intersection will be missed. Okay. But A will contain A. So, if we, if we make some, if we replace some U n by some U n prime, which still contains A and a smaller, then this property will still be true. So, one by one, you can replace U n and V n such that U n intersection will be missed empty for all n and m inside n. Next, we can also assume that u n is contained is a u n plus 1 bar contained inside u n plus 1 for all n. Okay, once you have this u n's, okay, you can make it u 1 intersection u 2, that will be open subset, u 1 intersection u 2 intersection u 3 will be open subset. Inside open subsets, you can choose a smaller one such that u n plus 1 bar is contained inside that and so on. So, you can make it decreasing. Similarly, you can make V n s also decreasing. So, that is what you can do by rearranging this, redefining this U n s. Now, let f from f n from x to 0 1 be such that f n of x minus U n is singleton 1 and f n of U n plus 1 bar is 0. So, this is by normality. I am here, I am not taking it this is precise set. This closed set going to 1 and this complement is going to 0. So, this u n x minus u n, u n is larger, x minus u n does not intersect u n plus 1 bar, u n plus 1 bar and this bar disjoint subset. So, you have got a sequence of function with this property. Take f to be you know sum of these f n s only thing is you should divide by some factor so that the whole thing is convergent. So, I am dividing by 2 power n because I know that these f n's are bounded by 1. So, one this will be less than equal to 1 by 2 power n summation. So, this, this will be also convergent. Okay. So, this uh, dividing by some, some numbers is a general principle which you have to learn in analysis. Okay. Sometimes this may not be too bad. Anything. If you have sequence of uh, uh, points, positive, non-negative things, you can always divide them by some larger na, in a sequence of another sequence which is convergent, so that you can make this one is convergent. It then follows that f from x from x to 0, 1 is continuous because each f n is f n divided by 2 power n is continuous. Okay. So, this is uniformly convergent because one is dominated by 1 by 2 power n. Okay. So, uniform limit therefore, f is continuous and then now what happens a is precise inverse of 0 of this one because if x belongs to a it must be inside every u n. Right? x is inside x is it is a belongs to x belongs to a means x is inside every u n right. So, there is no question for, for every u n you see this whole thing is 0 means corresponding f n is 0. Therefore, you see the precise 0 set. Okay. Similarly, we can construct a continuous function g from x to 0 1 such that b is precisely g inverse of 0. All that you have to do is same construction do it with v n s that is all. Okay. So, you have two different functions. Huh? I want a single function to do that job. So, this function f is uh, such that it is its uh, inverse image of 0, inverse image 0 is a, g is such an inverse image 0 is b. Now, I want one single function such that inverse image under that is 0, uh, uh, inverse image of 0 is or minus 1 is uh, a and uh, plus 1 is b the other way. So, for that I just take 
एच इक्व टू एफ माइनस जीरो एफ प्लस जी सी एफ प्लस जी मेक सेंस बिकॉज सम इज नेवर जीरो सी इफ एफ इज जीरो बोथ ऑफ देम पॉजिटिव फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नॉन नेगेटिव इफ एफ इज जीरो दैट मस्ट बी इन साइड ए ओके विच इज डिस्चार्ज फ्रॉम बी राइट आउटसाइड बी आउटसाइड ए इट इज नॉट जीरो आउटसाइड बी जी इज नॉट जीरो सो ए एंड बी आर डिस्चार्ज देर फॉर एफ प्लस जी इज नेवर जीरो सो आई कैन डिवाइड बाई एफ प्लस जी एफ माइनस जी डिवाइड एफ प्लस जी इज ऑलवेज टेक्स वैल्यूज बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन इज वॉट यू हैव टू माइनस वन टू प्लस वन मॉड्यूलस ऑफ दिस वन इज लेस टू वन बिकॉज दिस इज ऑलवेज स्मॉलर देन दिस वन दैट्स ऑल मॉड्यूलस ऑफ दिस इज लेस टू टू वन सो दिस एच टेक्स वैल्यूज विथ माइनस वन प्लस वन ओके फाइनली सपोज दिस दिस एच ऑफ एक्स इज वन वॉट ऑफ वॉट ऑफ दैट मीन दीज टू आर इक्वल एफ माइनस जी इक्वल टू एफ प्लस जी इक्वल टू दिस वर्ड दिस इक्वल टू वन दिस टू आर इक्वल वॉट डज दैट मीन एफ माइनस जी इक्वल टू एफ प्लस जी राइट वॉट डज दैट मीन सो सच पॉइंट आर प्रिसाइसली जी मस्ट बी जीरो राइट सो सो दैट विल बी अ पॉइंट ऑफ जी सिमिलरली एफ माइनस जी इक्वल टू एफ प्लस जी इक्वल टू जीरो मीन्स एफ इक्वल टू जी राइट इज राइट Suppose this is minus one. This is minus one means f minus g equal to minus f plus g. So that f must be zero, right? So h inverse of minus one is precisely a, and h inverse of one is precisely b. All right. So this is perfect normality given by normality plus every closed subset being g delta. Now let us come to Nagata's monomerization theorem proof, which will be much uh, simpler uh, now because we have perfect normality here. A T three space is metrizable. See, there is no second countability now, right? If and only it has a sigma locally finite basis. Sigma locally finite basis. Should ring a bell that is something to do with para-compactness. Okay, so proof of the only if part. Okay, if and only if is there. Only if it has sigma locally finite basis. So that all that you have to do is the metrizable space has sigma locally finite basis. Okay, this is what we have to do. It is actually a metric space. we have seen that it is para compact so for each n belonging to n let un be a locally finite open refinement of the open cover b1 by nx x belonging to x fix n take b1 by nx as x raised over x this is a cover okay this is an open cover for each n so that take u n to be a locally finite open refinement of this one so for each n i have got a locally finite open refinement okay all that i want to do is now if you take union of all these u n s call that as b this is a base for the topology on x okay this i have leave it as exercise because you have done so much of this kind of things okay So for all n is in all, that is all you have to use. All right. So show that this B is a base now. Clearly, this is sigma locally finite because by definition each now by choice U n are locally finite. So by definition, this is sigma locally finite. Okay. Let us now prove the if part. Let x tau be a T three space. And B equal to union of these B n be a base for tau. Okay. Remember, each base is also a cover for X, open cover. Where each B n, I am again writing down it uh, indexing with B n alpha, where alpha is in lambda n. So B n are 
uh, uh, members of bns are indexed by this set lambda n okay and each bn is locally finite family this is the starting hypothesis now now take lambda to be the union of all these lambda n's over n okay so this lambda is going to be our indexing set for you know your last time we took i raised to i raised to uh, uh, this n natural numbers now I, i would like to take i raised to lambda but i will do a slightly better job here namely the proof is now going to be similar to the proof of eurizon's metrization thing in the sense that we are going to produce an embedding of x inside the hilbert space l2 lambda the l2 space okay A with l2 norm so i will recall what is this l2 of lambda on any set okay any set l2 of that makes sense okay that is what i am going to do now i am just recalling it the generalized hilbert space okay for any function f from lambda to r let us denote sf sf you can read it at support of f to be all those lambda such that f lambda is not zero okay take l2 of lambda collection of all functions from lambda to r okay such that sf is countable and when it is countable look at the sum of all the f lambda squares sum total of that is defined so it is square summable functions that is the terminology okay square summable functions form a hilbert space okay i will just use the word hilbert space because the inner product here is not being exactly used only the norm is used and what is the norm norm is square root of summation of f alpha square okay if you want to know what is the inner product it is nothing but f g inner product is summation f alpha g alpha if you have complex valued functions you take summation f alpha g alpha bar and so on we are not interested in that part we are just interested in this norm okay so this is the hilbert space the first step is since every open cover has a refinement consisting of members of b because b is a base right every open cover for each point you can select a member of the b contained inside that that will be refinement so but b is locally finite therefore from 3.6 follows that x is para compact okay so that is the the link between the condition sigma locally finite base and this one in particular x is normal what we want we want perfect normality or we will see why so first we have we have seen that it is normal space second space is we shall now prove that every open set u in x is f sigma So now we see g delta and f sigma are all both coming together here. F sigma means what? Union of countable, countably many closed subsets, right? Every open subset in X is f sigma. Okay. Then from theorem six point seven, it follows that f x is perfectly normal. Okay. You want to recall theorem three eighty two. normal space is perfectly normal if you know it every closed set closed subset is a g delta you take the complements right this all okay so so is perfectly normality is there 
next by regularity given x belonging to u there exists a basic element b which you may call it as b lambda b lambda x lambda x inside x such that x is contained inside b contained inside b bar contained inside u it follows that if you put bn equal to union of all these b lambda x bars okay closures of all that as lambda reigns over lambda n the union of closures of all locally finite of a, this is a locally finite family then is a closed subset okay because this is locally finite b curly b was sigma locally finite each b lambda b n square curly b n square locally finite and i am taking these things are inside these things are inside b lambda okay lambda n sorry here therefore this is locally finite and hence b n are closed also note that b n is contained inside u because b lambda all of them b lambda bars are contained inside u therefore we have u itself is union of all these b n's for each point there is something when you take the whole of them it has to cover u itself so what we have shown u is countable union of closed subsets okay so that completes the proof that every open subset is f sigma the third step is take each b lambda inside this base by step 2 we have a continuous function f lambda from x to i such that b lambda is precise non zero uh, points all lambda uh, x all x such that f lambda of x is not equal to zero okay is b lambda are open subsets every complement is a closed subset that will be a precise set of zero so it is not zero that's all for each n inside n define gn from x to 0 infinity we are constructing this function so the finally we can put it take all of them and put it them inside the hilbert cube hilbert uh, space generalized hilbert space so define gn to be from x x to 1 to infinity by the formula gn of x is this adding one is just for carefulness okay you could have add, added any epsilon no problem 1 plus f lambda x square where lambda reigns over lambda n so this is a countable family now okay this square summable so this makes sense so 1 plus that makes sense square root makes sense so that is gn of by the local finiteness of the family the number of bns here okay this is actually finite now finite sum it follows that gn is well defined for the same reason it is continuous also because it is a finite sum this is continuous 1 plus that is continuous and it is never zero that is why i have put one here or some epsilon here i can take the square root the square root is also continuous note that for each lambda inside lambda there is a unique n lambda inside n such that lambda is in lambda n lambda so why look at this definition of our capital lambda this is a disjoint union okay each lambda here belongs to exactly one of the lambda ends that's all i'm using So that is important here to take the indexing set disjoint union of those uh, countable disjoint union of arbitrary families whatever okay so where were we so so each n each lambda belongs to unique n lambda 
Okay. So, I can talk about when lambda is in, uh, uh, is in n lambda, I can take h lambda of x to be f lambda of x divided by this number n lambda is some okay n lambda is some integer uh, positive integer g n lambda also makes sense okay corresponding n lambda for each lambda it is a unique n lambda yeah. okay g n lambda of x so divide by this one this is a non zero function so divide by that so, f x is f lambda is continuous, this is continuous, h lambda are continuous. Okay. Are all these continuous functions taking values inside i now because f lambda is only one of, you see, if you take the square of this, this square, this square, then this function is one of them here. So, the numerator is always smaller than denominator and they are all positive. So, they take values inside i. Okay. Now, I can define h from x to i raised to lambda itself. Okay. In particular, it will be inside r raised to lambda, no problem, by the formula h x of lambda equal to h lambda of x. h x is a function from lambda to i. So, it is lambda th value. You can think of the function or you can think of it as a element in the product. So, is lambda coordinate either way. It is h lambda of x. By the very definition, if you take the product topology, it would be continuous. Okay. The very first thing to do is check that h lambda is first of all, is, you have defined it as an element of r raised to lambda, but I want it to be inside L2 of lambda. L2 of lambda is a subspace of uh, r raised to lambda. This is an element of r raised to lambda. So, this follows easily since first of all, for each fixed x, h x of lambda is not equal to 0. For finitely many lambda is inside lambda n, for each lambda n is finite. Therefore, set of points where an h x lambda is not equal to 0 is countable. So, s of this uh, s of h x is the set of points wherein it is not 0, this is supported, that is countable. Now, second thing is if you take the sum of all of them after squaring the square and then take the sum, the finite on, on fixing lambda n, this is the finite sum, that is nothing but summation h lambda of x square lambda inside lambda n. Okay. But by definition, this is f lambda x square divided by n square because is I have to take n lambda, but lambda is in lambda n. This n is this n itself here, n square g n of x square. I do not have to write g n lambda because n lambdas are all n here because lambda is in lambda n. Okay. And this summation this this number is 1 plus this summation. So, this is smaller than this one. So, this is less than 1 by n square. If for each n, this is less than 1 by n square, when you take summation of all of them, that will less than summation of 1 by n square, which become convergent. And we wanted that one to be convergent. Therefore, h x is an element of L 2. So, we have got a function x to L 2. All right. Sir, huh. uh, may you please repeat this step. So, uh, we had a, uh, uh, from starting with every element of x, we wanted to associate a element of L 2 of lambda. Mm. So, uh, that was the, from step 2, we mm. found that every b lambda Hmm. Uh, what the open set, so we can associate a function so that it is exactly non-zero. Hmm. That was the first step, of the first part of step. Hmm. That will come that now in the. Function. That will come now in the proof of uh, injectivity and continuity and all that. Right now, 
the that this is open subset precisely it is zero etc is not used only local finiteness is used so that we have come uh, you know this is countable the set of points s of h lambda right so yeah. to show that it is inside l2 of lambda only divided by n n lambda right this n lambda term is brought precisely for that not only that why in the definition of gn i have put one here for two different purposes first of all i should be sure that when i take square roots continuity etc i should not be getting into zero don't bump into zero secondly this term is bigger than just this term so there are two purposes here okay so gnx is defined like this i could have i have told you any any positive constant uh, would have done the job here okay so look at here now these are inside i is not very crucial but this is but this numerator divided by this is this is whole thing is less than n lambda that is important okay not just in i that is that won't give you anything is less than 1 by n lambda ha huh? 1 divided by n lambda that is important here okay so that will be when you fix lambda in sir n uh, uh, lambda capital n uh, ca capital lambda n what is n lambda n lambda is n so that same n is there so whole thing finite this finite collection is 1 by n square now you take the sum over n so that must be convergent that is convergent so you are inside l2 okay now comes you see the role of all this open the etc still be, will be there still uh, you have to do that we now check this h is injective given x1 not equal to x2 in x okay since x is hausdorff space is t3 space that we have assumed right you will have b lambda is a basic element so set x1 is in b lambda and x2 is not in b lambda right so this immediately implies that the corresponding f lambda of x1 is not zero but f lambda of x2 is zero so precise zeros have been used here now for f lambda but h lambda of x1 is not zero whereas h lambda of x2 is not zero because what is h lambda h lambda as f lambda is in the numerator and this is always non zero this is zero if and only if this is zero right that is what it is so h lambda separate point okay therefore h h x1 of lambda will not be equal to h x2 of lambda so this lambda coordinates will be different as soon as x1 is not equal to x2 okay so this proves h is injective all right see countable family won't have been able to do this is the local base we have used countable family of local base was possible if if uh, x square second countable okay however some countability was necessary what is that sigma locally finiteness so that plays the role here next okay to get l2 otherwise we won't be able to get l2 next we check that h from x to h x is a closed function okay injective closed continuity these three things we have to show right so continuity is uh, at the last okay let a be any closed subset of x you have to show the h a is closed take a phi outside of h a it is in, inside h x of course okay everything is inside h x in the whole l2 we don't know we don't need that okay to show something is embedding you have to take the only image and work inside the image 
So, phi is h of some x for x inside x minus a because it is not in h a. But then x belongs to B lambda contained inside x minus a. Okay, a is starting with a closed subset. So, you will have some B lambda such that x belongs to B lambda contained inside x minus a for some lambda. So, that automatically implies h lambda of x is not 0. Whereas, h lambda of a will be 0 for all a inside a. Okay. The precise set of uh, non zero elements are inside B lambda. So, outside uh, x minus a, outside a, so uh, for all a, outside this uh, inside x minus uh, outside x minus a, so for all a, it will be 0. Therefore, if you take the norm of h x minus h a, okay, this is summation h lambda, no, is right, uh, of this minus h of that one, there will be one term, it is ok, norm square is the summation squares and so on, when you are taking square root, there will be one term which is h lambda of x minus h lambda of a there will be many other terms, they are all non-negative terms. This sum, this therefore, this thing is bigger than equal to this one. Okay. In one coordinate, this is 0 and this is not 0. Okay. So, that x minus h lambda modulus is precisely equal to h lambda of x and that is positive. This happens for all A one single number positive and this norm is bigger than that for all A. That means, the distance between H x and the set A is positive. Okay. Therefore, H x cannot be in the closure of H a bar, take H a bar closure. Distance between H x and H of A is positive. Okay. This says point wise, but this is true for all A. Therefore, distance between H x and H capital A is positive. That means, H x is not in the closure of H A. Okay, we want to show that H A is closed. So, first of all, H x is not in the closure. Since this is true for all points x minus A, H x minus H A, this implies that H x minus H A itself is contained inside h a minus h a bar, because if you take any point here, it is just now we have shown that it is not in h a bar, that is all. But by De Morgan law, this just means that h a bar is contained inside h a. If the bar is contained inside the set itself, that means that, that set is closed. Okay. Maybe you can directly prove that from here to here it is an open set. I think close proving closeness is easier, that is all. All right. Now let us check H is continuous. Okay. Now you see the full force of all these things will be used, how we have constructed. Given x belonging to x, choose epsilon, let epsilon be positive, we have to produce some open subset u around x such that x belongs to, x prime belongs to u implies norm of h x prime minus h x is less than epsilon. So, this is the continuity, I am using the, the norm on the codomain, okay. x is just a topological space, so I have to use only open subsets around that one which have it for every x, for every epsilon, I have to prove this. As soon as epsilon is given, choose some n, n such that n to infinity, I can put it a k also earlier, I have to k and so you have capital, no problem. n plus 1 to infinity, 1 by n square is less than epsilon by 4. Maybe epsilon by 8, if you want, you can choose, no matter. Okay. By local finiteness of all these b n's, we get an open set V around X such that this open set V meets only finitely many members of B n for all n less than equal to capital N. 
for each of them you will get say b1 you will get v1 b2 you will get v2 up to b capital n you get v capital n but then you can take the intersection of v1 v2 v capital n call that as v that's all okay this v is a neighborhood of x which will meet finitely many members of bn n ranging from 1 to capital n all right let us denote these members by b lambda i so b lambda i is belong to all they will all belong to b1 b2 b3 or b up to n where i don't care so totally they are in number k finite now choose a neighborhood u of x such that u is inside this v smaller neighborhood i am going to choose and these finitely many continuous functions no h lambda i of x prime minus h lambda i of x is less than the sum epsilon i have chosen carefully the sum epsilon for this epsilon square root of epsilon by square root of 2k choose neighborhoods okay for each of them choose neighborhoods and then take the intersection take intersection with v you will get a subset u contained inside u for which all these inequalities will be true for all points x prime inside u okay that is by continuity of each h lambda i finitely many of them you can do so this is for all x inside u if you now take the summation n range to 1 to n and all points lambda inside lambda n h modulus of hx lambda minus h lambda of x square square if i take here that will be epsilon divided by 2k how many are there k of them so it's k times epsilon divided by 2k okay and that is nothing but epsilon bit all right all the sums up to capital n here this is epsilon bit okay now on the other hand what happens in the second part namely n plus 1 to infinity n plus 1 to infinity take summation lambda inside capital lambda n this is a double summation hx h lambda of x prime minus h lambda of x square okay what happens to this summation this is n to infinity as it is lambda as it is h lambda of x prime square plus h lambda of x square okay so squares of difference is less than or equal to square you know square of each individual term so that is a very rough estimate actually but that is enough because this summation these are all positive things okay though this is maybe infinite when lambda equal to lambda and this is a finite sum actually okay never mind we can separate them out if you if you take the first summation is n going one to infinity is to be less than 1 by n square by choice this is also less than 1 by n square for each x prime x is this is the property that we have chosen okay so that is twice summation and n plus 1 to infinity 1 by n square each of them is less than epsilon by 4 so twice that is less than epsilon by 2 okay thus it follows that u is the required neighborhood of x so guess if you take sum together this sum square is less than epsilon by 2 plus this the sum sort of square is less than epsilon so we have instead of showing epsilon square we have shown that is matter we should have come square root of epsilon started with okay so this proves the continuity of h and thereby the theorem is proved okay so here are a few exercises for you one exercise here it is uh, not very difficult at all every matrix space has a sigma locally finite base okay so i have put already as exercise and i have put it as separately in the proof somewhere i should prove this one as an exercise remember so i have separately mentioned it that's all 
may be in the earlier theorem never mind so there are many problems in metrizations like you may talk about when can a topological space be a given a metric which is complete such things are called complete metrization we shall not be able to discuss such uh, uh, things which are too special okay thank you